Hi, and welcome to Pokemon The Ultimate Experience Part 2, Trading and Training. I'm Jamie Jacobs, and welcome to the Collector's Guide to the Galaxy. Today we're going to talk to some kids about their secret trading techniques, so hopefully I don't get burned. And we're going to talk to Storm, a Pokemon master, about, well, his techniques in training. And if I'm lucky, I'm going to get to go against him head to head. Storm versus Jamie. Storm versus Jamie? I got to come up with a better name. Storm versus Leopard Boy. And here we are, the trading has begun. Actually, the mayhem has begun. If you think the New York Stock Exchange is crazy, check this out. As a matter of fact, I'm lucky enough to have, that's right, I got my own set and I'm going in. Look at Brian I have a feeling there's something good in here, so I want to start some trading. Does anybody want to trade? Huh? Okay, all right. Well, anyway, now hold on a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this up right now in front of all of you guys, but I'm going to hold one just in case. Hold on. Is there, a, yeah, these are human proof, actually. Now, do these have gum in them? You get gum? No. No? All right, now, hold on. I'm going to hide this one, all right, because this is the winner. I thought, I'm willing to trade a couple of these, all right? So I'm just going to whip out one, and you guys tell me what's fair and what isn't. All right, here we go. This is this is Scratch. Anybody, uh, anybody, anybody uh, up for a Scratch? No, thanks. No? Is, is Scratch bad? Let me see. It's okay. That's a point damage, but hey. compared to some cards, it stinks. Yeah, but it's got 40 HPs. That, that, ah, uh, <laughs> the elusive Charizard. Well, how do you know I don't have a Charizard in here? Rapidash, is that pretty good? Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. All right, let's trade. Who wants to trade? Talk to me, talk to me. Tauros, is Tauros a bad thing? What do you think? Is it fair? Fair. Let me look for it, Max. You think it's fair? Yeah. What's your name? Sophie, you look honest. You look honest. Tell the camera that it's a fair trade. It's a fair trade. All right, I'm going to do it. All right, I want someone to explain to me how you figure out what's a good trade and what is not a trade. All right, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, we're going to let, let this guy explain what is a good trade real quick. All right, here we go. All right, the rarity symbol on the bottom right-hand corner. All right, so the rarity symbol is where? Right here. That's common. All right, this is a very common card then? Yes. Yeah. All right, so it's not that good. That's a common? Diamonds are Does? Yes. Okay. Stars are rare. All right. Diamonds are uncommon and stars are rare. Stars are rare, diamonds are uncommon. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Now, do, does the trainer card do anything for me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have trainer cards. You get that in every pack. Oh, they say you get a trainer card in every pack. All right. You want to trade a trainer card for for that? Is that is you think that's pretty fair, you guys? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. 
How, how come I feel this is there's a conspiracy happening here and I'm gonna walk away with it? All right, it's fair. All right, it's fair. Now, hold on. We gotta shake again. Let's do the Pokemon shake, something like that. No. All right, so let's move on. Uh, Tauros, what, how are, how are we? Okay. Now, hold on. Sh show the show the camera right on. Right on. Now I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna ask him. Is is this? Do you think this is a fair trade, a Tauros for a ride on? Yes, it is. Very good trade. <laughs> all right. Let me see the card. Yeah, it's a trade. All right, this is a fair trade. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. But we have to do we have to do the Pokemon uh, thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So uh, we're in the middle of it all, and we have an innocent bystander. And I'm, I'm guessing you have a, a young adult here that's yeah, that's that's the my trading. Children are here in the middle of it all, so I'm just waiting out the time. Now, is this an every every Wednesday situation? We've been here twice, so it's about twice in the last six weeks. Have you uh, got into the trading wars at all? I have no idea what they're doing. You and you and me both. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, you, you're, you're getting off real good here. Got a, we started with five little cards, ended up with 30. You're I'm doing good? All right. Okay, I like her. The key to this game, am I wrong or right, is to get as many cards as you can. Uh, you could get, well, if you have all bad cards, it wouldn't be good. So if I had a giant stack taller than me, it wouldn't matter. It's 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 it, it's it's how good the cards are. Yeah, you can only play 60 cards in the game. All right, now you help me. Take a look at her cards. Tell me if it's worth trading anything. She got some good stuff. She doesn't have anything good. It dropped an energy. So that's pretty much all. So, so uh, what do you what do you think? Should I should I, should I do anything? That's a foil card. But she's so darn cute, isn't she? I mean, what? Yes, she is. Well, no comment on that. No comment on that. <laughs> she's so darn cute. I, I, I feel like I need to give her something. Uh, me. If you have a chair, I got it. What other foils do you have? What other foils do you have? Whoa, what's that? Oh, I'm trading for oh, Yes. Oh, I'm yes. trading for Alright, alright, let me find it. Okay, where is it? It's not even in here. Hey. Let me find it. Alright, we're here with Brett and uh I had a quick question uh, about what advice you could give um, young adults or even adults on, on their book as far as the cards go. Well, if you're getting them for a collection just because you like the pictures, you like the whole concept of Pokemon, then the best thing is to always try to pick up the rarest ones um, as easily as possible, as quickly as possible. And when you're trading, don't give away something that you'll be able to acquire, reacquire too easily for something that's going to be impossible to replace. The cards actually have symbols on them telling you whether they're common, uncommon, or rare. So that even if you're trading a rare card away for bulk, you can make sure to get you know, a fair trade out of it. Or just one rare for one rare, or something comparable. On the other hand, if you don't collect the cards, you just enjoy the game, and you want to build a deck that will help you win, say, tournaments like the one here today, or other, other ones elsewhere, then you'd want things that will help your game itself. Certain cards give you card advantage, like Bill immediately replaces itself and gives you an extra card. Um, there's another one called Professor Oak, which will refill your entire hand. Both of those will help you get through your deck to the cards you need quickly, so you can get to your big, strong Pokemon that will eventually win the game for you. Okay, so there you have it. Those are some tips on how to not only be a, a good collector, but a better trader as well. Okay, so thanks a lot, Brett. I really You're appreciate you, you talking to us. Anytime. And uh, good luck with the... Uh, the rest of the day. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a good, wow, that's a fat book you got there. You got a lot there, huh? Yeah, a ton. Okay, so uh, is there any other strategies I need to know about trading cards uh, at all to help me along so I don't get hosed like I just did a few minutes back? Um, 
I use a magazine that tells the prices. So would that be considered, uh, uh, I don't know, inside information or cheating? No. It's just smart. Yeah. Okay, good. If you don't get, get a foil for a foil, it's a, it's a bad trade. So this, this one's a foil? Yeah. Is a hologram and foil the same thing? Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Foil, shiny back, whatever. Okay, so those are three names that they're kind of all the same. How long have you been trading? A couple months. couple months? Have you had any good fr trades today? You've had one good trade? What was it? Yen card for a hypno. So that, that's a pretty good trade. Did the other guy make out okay too, or what? Yeah. Oh, hey, how you doing? Got any good trades today? Yeah, I almost got him you this close, but I, I traded this kid three rares for one of my Zapdoses. I got a good trade. Okay, could you, could you elaborate on the whole rare thing in a Zapdos or whatever? Sure. Uh, the rare symbol means it's hard to find in a pack, and if you get it, you're pretty lucky. And the Zapdos, it's one of the three legendary mystic birds, and it's pretty hard to get. I had to buy it here from Collector's Galaxy, so. And I got a pretty good deal off it. I traded him for a Raichu, a Jolteon, and Victory Bell, so I got a pretty good trade. Okay, and so uh, have you ever have you ever done a trade here where you just totally lost your head and, and later on figured out that you made the biggest mistake of your life? Yeah, I traded a, my Charizard away for like these two foils, and then I wish I hadn't done it because I had the whole American set, and I was like, and it took me like two months to get the whole thing. So I was pretty depressed. Uh, did you seek counseling or any help of any sort? No, I looked in myself for counseling, and I, I eventually got over because I got another Charizard in Japanese. Now I'm giving up the whole American thing, just going for the Japanese. Finding strength from within. Thank you, sir. Good luck today. Okay. One for I traded about, like, 18 cards for one Blastoise, which is a really good card. Then I traded back to my friend because I realized that Blastoise was a very good card. Well, the best Pokemon trade I ever did was probably... What I've got Kangaskhan. Because Kang Kangaskhan is the cheapest Pokemon you can get. And he's the easiest card you can use. So you do is flip a coin four times as Comet Punch. And you can literally kill every single Pokemon. Except for the Charizard. Want a Nettle Queen? Want a Nettle Queen for your Polymath? Hey, do you have been any uh, Jerry Springer-like situations happening tonight? No, no. So it's kind of uh, kind of calm. Yeah, we pretty much keep that in check. You seem like sort of a, a, a master at this, or close. Are you close to being a master at all? I wish. All right. What uh, what what sort of trading techniques do you use to better your game? What she gave me this. Are you talking about when I'm? Playing somebody with the cards, or am I trading? I'm talking when you're in the trenches, when it's full on, when the other person's looking at you, sneering, and you guys are going head to head. Uh, 
most powerful HP, and if it takes away the most, that would be it. If it takes away the most HP, like a 30x on a Nidor Rhino. It's pretty good. Probably pronounced that wrong, but. What are you, what are your training tips? Like what what do you do to, to, to be good and to 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 win and, and, and get good cards? Well, I buy a lot of booster packs, of course, and a lot of cards. Look at the card really closely, see what it does, and see not like Charizard. Oh, no, it's 100 damage. Woo! I mean, like you could look at another guy that's like a little guy, and he could whoop like this Mr. Mon guy has 40 HP. And that guy's 120, he could beat him just with one move that he has. Really? It's just like a power, and so he, Charizard can't attack him or something. Everybody thinks Charizard is such a good card. So, so the truth comes out that Charizard is really kind of lame. I, I used to have like six or seven of those cards. And you got rid of them? Yep, I only got one now. I got, a, I got two sets in my backpack right now. But I don't take them out, else the kids go, ooh, ooh, I'll show you something like that. Something for like that. Like that. Okay, so what, uh, what's the main thing to keep in mind while trading? Um, make sure you always get the better deal, I guess. That's what I do. Make sure you're not ripping yourself off. Look at the, the quality of the card if it's not bent and scratched up. Uh, would anybody like to buy some Star Wars stuff? I mean, we got uh, Jar Jar Banks or a uh, Naboo pistol. So I, I heard this vicious rumor that uh, Pikachu kicked your butt. Is that true? You know, it was called the Phantom Menace, and, uh, well, there's not even a Phantom in here. Go over there to the excitement. Bye. I'm standing here with Storm, the Pokemon master, and uh, rumor has it that you were kind of looking in on some of my trading. Yeah, I was, I was taking a peek. Okay, I started with the Jungle Booster. What? And check it out. Look how I did. Um. Well, I gotta see the cards before I can tell you how well you did. Uh, sometimes it doesn't matter how many cards you get, it depends on what you get. Oh, you mean so if I have a whole bunch, it doesn't matter, or it could, could not matter? Yeah, it could not matter. It just depends on the quality of the card and what cards you actually have. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and hand them over to you, okay. and you uh, <laughs> just give me a little synopsis of okay. how I did, okay? All right, here we go. Take a look at them here, let's see. Uh, Pikachu is common. Eevee, it's okay. Um, let's see, Mankey, he's all right. You got a lot of those. You got a lot of duplicates. Um, no foils at all. Okay, so that that that's bad. Yeah, you want to get foils. For the most part, foils are like the most collectible cards. You know, I could swear I uh, had some of those at one point. Yeah, you did, and you gave them away pretty easily too. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. You got to watch out. Some kids will take advantage of you. They'll tell you they don't really want it, and then they'll, you'll sell it for cheaper. So, like, when uh, they were all gathered around me and saying, oh, do it, do it, do it, I shouldn't have. Yeah, you should have kept on to it. Probably could have got a better card out of it. For the most part, your best card is probably Taurus. Okay, so my best card is Taurus. Yeah. And other than that, uh... You got a lot of commons. So you started out with a couple of pretty good cards, but you wind up getting just a whole bunch of comments, which, I mean, people give them away all day long. All right, so, uh, well, I learned my lesson. I won't do that again. And you witnessed, actually, me uh, me, me losing pretty yeah, bad. You, yeah, you actually traded again. You gave another kid 10 regular cards for another um, foil, which kind of gave you a, another lead back, but then you just kind of gave it away, so. Plus, too, my foil had... Uh, had scratches on it too, so I didn't notice. Yeah, scratches can bring down the quality of the card. Now, if you're if you're getting cards to trade or getting cards to play, is there a difference? I mean, what what it's, 
what's that yeah. like? There, there's a big difference in getting the cards to play and depending on if you're trading. Um, if you're just trading to collect the cards, for the most part, you just want to get the really expensive foils. Um, but if you're trading to build a deck or something like that, sometimes it's okay to get duplicates of commons and stuff like that because your, your cheapest cards are your basic Pokemon. And um, if you're building a deck and you're learning how to play the game, you need a lot of those. Okay, so what if what if I'm I'm trading and I'm unsure of a trade? What what do I do? Well, if you're unsure of a trade, basically what you want to do is either have your uh, parent there looking in on you, um, uh, somebody who's in the store, a specialist like myself, um, or a collector who's there who's actually running the tournament. I mean the trading or whatever, and basically ask them, or you can even ask your friend. If he's there with you, you ask him what do you think, you know. But always be sure of a trade. If you're unsure, always ask someone else. Throw in some tips and techniques that are going to help me be a better, uh, better player. Um, well, basically, to begin with, you want to try to get a lot of cards. Um, you want to use your duplicates. You never want to trade cards that you need because you're trying to complete a whole set. And I'm, right now, I believe there's 152 cards. Um, so what you do is you get the duplicates that you don't ha that you don't need, and you trade for some of the cards that you do need. Um, when you're trading, like I said before, if you're not sure um, for a trade, you, you either ask your friend or a specialist who's on there. Um, for the most part, you can check on the cards. Some of the cards have little symbols at the bottom right-hand corner. Um, circle represents uh, common. Um, a diamond represents uncommons, and then the stars are rare. And basically, you, you don't want to trade a rare card for you know a couple of commons, unless, of course, you're building a deck or something like that. So... So there is, there again, this reiterates the fact that there is a difference between collecting cards for trading right. and collecting cards for playing. Exactly, there is. There's a big difference. Let's find out exactly how you would go about uh, trading, and if somebody had something you wanted, how would you do it, and what would you look for from the other person trying to get something from you? Um, well, for the most part, it depends on what card I'm looking for. But like I said, say for instance, if I'm looking for a Raichu or something, which is a foil um, electric Pokemon, um, you don't want you don't want to trade like foil cards for regular cards because it, it will never add up because a foil card is way more valuable than regular cards. Um, you also what I what I would do if I'm trading for it, I would like I would act I would offer less than what I'm actually wanting to get it for. Because usually what the person, when they're offering, they're going to try to get you out of more cards. So you just got to kind of will and deal back and forth. You already know what you want to trade it for, but you also know that they're probably, you know, going to want a little extra. So you just kind of meet them halfway. What technique would you use if you saw a card that somebody had that you wanted and, uh, and it was an experienced uh, trader? What, what, what's something that Storm would do? Well, for the most part, I would probably just try to find out what I think the person who's trading the card and what they want. Like, it's like playing poker, you want to find out his weaknesses. And you say, well, let me see your cards for a second. I got this card, I want to trade you. Look at what cards, and he goes, oh, okay, he needs this guy, he needs this guy, and this guy. And you just kind of round it out. Well, I'll give you this guy and this guy if you give me this guy. You know, and usually they go, oh, okay, because I need those two guys. <laughs> Now remember, if somebody asks to take a peek at you, say no, because you need this card. Now, if somebody tells you you're a Charmander, it's not a compliment. Believe me. Basically, Pokemon consist of seven different uh, colors, seven different elements. Um, the, uh, these elements come in Pokemons as well as energy. You have your colorless energy. You have your grass energy. You have your electric energy. You have fighting energy, you have fire energy, you have your water energy, and you have your psychic energy. 
Um, each one of these en energies, like I said before, they have uh, Pokemon that coincide with these energies. Like with Electric, you have Pikachu, he's an electric Pokemon. You have Charmander, who is a fire Pokemon. You have Squirtle, who's a water Pokemon. Uh, Rattata, who's a colorless Pokemon. You have Mewtwo, who is a psychic Pokemon. And then Machop. Oops, wait, Machop, who is an energy Pokemon. And then I'm missing grass, just a second. And then there's Bulbasaur, who's a grass Pokemon. Um, each one of these Pokemon that you see in front of you are what we call basic Pokemons. Basically what basic Pokemons are exactly what they are. They're the basic stage that comes out before you can evolve into anything else. Um, I'll explain evolve later. Um, the way you can tell that they're basic Pokemons, if you look in, up into the left hand corner of the cards, you'll see right here it says basic Pokemon. Also, the way that you can tell what type of Pokemon they are is you see this little icon right here in the corner, which is a circle. In the middle of it, it has what um, element they are. Like Charmander has a flame, just like the fire energy does. Um, Squirtle has a water inside a circle, just like the uh, water energy does. Um, this little symbol, these little numbers right here that has HP next to it, basically what this is is the Pokemon's hit points. Um, some people call it health points, some people call it HP, some people call it hyper points. Uh, no matter what you call it, basically what it is is um, Pokemon's uh, lifespan. Basically what it is is when he runs out of these hit points, he's knocked out, which means he can't fight anymore. Each Pokemon has different attacks. The attacks are right here under their picture, as you can see, like with um, Charmander's Scratch. Um, with this emblem right here, he does Scratch for 10. Now this circle right here that's colorless, like this energy down here, that doesn't mean that he needs this specific energy in order to do this attack. Basically what this means is that he can use any color energy in, attached to him in order to do this attack. Okay, now keep in mind everything that I explained to you guys, you might not kind of understand it right now because it's just words and, and it's explaining how the cards uh, demonstrate and how they work. But for the most part, once I show you the demo game and we go through the steps, you guys will see that it's pretty easy to catch on. Okay. He does an attack for 10, and basically this is the damage that he does to another Pokemon when he does the scratch attack. Um, some attacks require more energy than one, like he has only require one, he has required one, but it has to be a fighting energy, like Machop. He does a low kick for 20, but he has to have a fire ener I mean a fighting energy attached to him, but he only needs one, and for every circle icon that's next to that attack, that's one more energy card that he needs attached to him. Like Bulbasaur's attack, he does uh, Leech Seed, and he needs two grass energy attached to him in order to do this attack. Um, once he does this attack for 20 to the, the defending Pokemon, he heals himself for, for one counter. Each counter represents 10, so basically he heals himself for 10 points of damage every time he uses an attack. So if he's damaged for 10 points of damage and then he does his attack, it heals him back up completely. Then what you have, after the attacks, you have what they call weaknesses. Most Pokemon have weaknesses, some of them don't have weaknesses. Basically what the weakness does is any damage that a Pokemon takes from that specific weakness that he's weak against, he takes double. Say for instance like Charmander, he's weak against water. That means if Squirtle here, because he's a water Pokemon, he attacks Charmander, Charmander would take double. So if he hits him for 10, he would take 20. Then you have what you call resistance. These particular Pokemons don't have resistances, but this one does. Rattata, he has, he has resistance. Basically what he's resistance against is psychic. You see the little circle, it's purple and it has a little icon, like this energy. Um, that means he's resistance against uh, Mewtwo's attacks, but he's only resistance up to minus 30. What this means, if Mewtwo attacks him for 30 points of damage, it does how much? Zero, okay? But if he attacks him for 40, how much does it do? 10, right, there you go. If he attacks him for 50, he only does 20, and so forth. So you subtract that. It's like he's immune to it, but only, only up to minus 30. These are basic Pokemons. Some of them evolve into bigger Pokemon. Um, they're the same Pokemon, they just get a little bit bigger. I'm gonna use a couple of them as, a, as an example, like War Tur I mean, like Squirtle. He turns into War Turtle. He also turns into Blastoise, but right now we're just gonna use the first stage as an example. He's the same Pokemon, the only difference is that he's, his name changes and he gets bigger. He has more hit points. Um, the way you can tell what card he attaches to because it has a little picture of Squirtle and also says up at the top that he evolves from Squirtle. 
So it tells you exactly what you need to do with the card when you get it in your hand. So if you're not sure, just read the text and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Then they have what they call the second stage. So far, this is the highest stage that Pokemons evolve into. It's stage number two. Um, at this point, the Pokemon's at his max, pretty much as he can get. Um, he has more hit points, like with Machamp, he has 100. Um, right here at the top, it tells you he evolves from Machoke. Um, he has another attack, which costs more energy. He needs three fight and one of any other color. He's still weak against Psychic, and his retreat cost is three. Uh, he does more damage, which means he does 60 instead of uh, 20, which he was doing when he was Machop. Also, second stage Pokemon get most of uh, second stage Pokemons get what they call a Pokemon power. Basically, what Pokemon power is, right, it's an extra move. Basically, it happens automatically, or you can just use it as often as you like, depending on what the text say. Like with Machamp, basically, what his Pokemon does is it does damage to the other person's Pokemon for attacking him because he's like he's like a big rock, so he gets really big and really hard. So if, say, for instance, if Charmander, bless you. So say, for instance, if Charmander tried to scratch him, he would take 10 damage just for scratching him. He would hurt his hand because he's so hard. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. When you can evolve a Pokemon, you only want to evolve it when you have enough energy to be able to attack with him. Unless, of course, you're going to use him for a big wall because that's what he becomes. Say, for instance, if you evolve Machamp all the way to Sage 2 and he, has, he doesn't have the four, um, the four energy he needs to in order to attack, he just becomes a big wall. And he just, you know, the opponent's just hitting him until you knock him out. So what you do is you wait till you have enough energy. That way, once you evolve him, he's ready still, he still can attack. He can still put the smash down. And then you have what you call um, trainers. Basically what trainers do is they help you defend your Pokemon. There's different kind of trainers. I'm just gonna go over a few so you guys can get an overview of how they work. Um, there's trainers, trainers like um, Switch. Basically what Switch allows you to do is it allows you to switch your Pokemon without having to use the retreat cost. Remember I explained to you sometimes you have to discard energy in order to run away? Basically what this is, is it's kind of like a Pokeball. It's like instead of the Pokemon actively running away himself, you use the Pokemon to, to bring him back. So it's free, you don't use any energy up doing that. Um, there's, there's trainers which are called like energy removals. Basically what energy removals does is it removes energy from a particular Pokemon because the object is the, of the game is to build your Pokemon up really big with a lot of energy and to keep your opponent from doing the same. As long as his Pokemon don't have any energy and they're weak, you can knock them out quicker because the more energy they get, the more they can evolve them, the quicker they can evolve them and nobody wants to fight against a big Pokemon. There's Gust of Wind. Basically Gust of Wind is the same thing as Switch except you use it against your opponent because sometimes what will happen is your opponent will have a very big Pokemon that you can't take out with your regular Pokemon and he has like weak Pokemon on the bench. That allows you to switch. So that way you can bring in the weak Pokemon that you can knock out really quick and then you get a prize card. So it's like a tactical card, strategic card. So um, can you only use one of these cards in a game? Or no, you can use up to four in your deck and say for instance if you're playing a hand and you have one Squirtle down and you have four Power Pluses, you can put all four on them. You can build it up so he does 50 in one shot, boom, knock Pokemon out. A lot of times you, you'll find people who play like that and they win very quickly. Well, I like the way you play it. It's, it's fun. It's fun, it's also a strategy and it's like Vegas, it's all in the cards. I mean, seriously. After you draw your card on your turn, which he has already done, the next thing you want to do is uh, play any trainers that you might have that's going to help you out. Like for instance, Bill. Bill, basically what he does is what? Allows you to get two cards. So a lot of times you want to use him immediately. So you say, I'm going to use my trainer, Bill. You put him in your disc discard pile, which is always next to your deck, and then you pull two more cards. And those go into your hand. Now, I have an energy removal, which I'm going to use. Basically what that allows me to do is remove his energy. The reason why I want to do that, because what happens is if he puts another fighting energy on Diglett, he can do Mud Slap. That's gonna hit my guy for 30 and it's gonna knock him out. And I don't want him to do that because he'll get a prize card and then he'll be winning. So I'm gonna remove that energy, that particular energy he loses and it goes to this card pile. Now for the most part he has two fire Pokemon and one colorless. He wants to use his colorless because right now all he has is fighting energy. He doesn't have any fire energy so that's not really gonna do him any good. So he wants to use somebody who can use the energy that he has. So he'll put his Rattata on the bench 
and then he's gonna take his one energy for this turn because you always want your main Pokemon to be attacking. Actually, let me think about that for a second. <laughs> Either way, he could go both ways. If he wanted to, since Diglett has free, free retreat costs, which means he doesn't lose energy, he could actually switch this guy since he's hurt and he can only do 10, he can switch it with this guy and do 20, okay? So he has this one energy he can use, but if he used Diglett, he'll do 10 to me, but I'll actually take 20 because I'm weak against fighting, so I'll take double. So he could really much, pretty much go both ways. So it's basically up to him. Since his Diglett is hurt already and he only has 20 more to go, he doesn't want to leave him out here because then that subjects him to be knocked out. So he might want to retreat this guy. He brings up his Rattata, then he uses his one energy, and then he attaches that energy. And like he only needs one energy to do bite, and since it's colorless circle, that means he can use any color energy, so he attaches the fighting. Okay. okay. There's three ways you can lose or win in this game. If your opponent knocks all your Pokemon out, he wins. If he knocks out enough Pokemon to get all your prize cards, he wins. If you run out of cards, like say for instance my turn and I don't have a card to pull, I lose and opponent wins. For the most part, the only thing I really can do is evolve my guy. So now the reason why I'm evolving him is because one, I put him out last turn, so he has to stay in one turn before you can evolve him. So every time you evolve him, you have to wait a turn. Say for instance, if you have Machop, okay? You make him a choke, you have to wait a turn. Then you make him a champ. You can't do both at the same, on the same time. Um, the reason why I'm making him Gyarados is because I have no energy and he's knocking out my Pokemon. So I'm gonna bring this guy here and he's gonna be a big wall for me, right? Right. And another reason why I'm going to uh, make him big right now, he has all fighting Pokemon, right, on his bench. Gyarados resistance is fighting Pokemon. So that means it not only becomes a big wall with 100 hit points, but it becomes a big wall that he can't damage anytime soon. What allows me to do is recuperate from what he just did to me because he just knocked out my Pokemon and all that other good stuff. Oh, so he has a lot of fight energy, which is good because he's using his fighting Pokemon. Now, Rattata is already built up because he only has one energy. You can put more on him, but why waste it? He only needs one energy to do his only attack. He's not evolving him and he doesn't need an extra energy in order to retreat. So what he wants to start doing now is building up his benched Pokemon. So what you do is you put energy on this guy since he's not hurt this is probably the main guy you want to put it on so now he's ready to go so for whatever reason if um Rattata gets knocked out this guy's ready to fight you don't have to build him up you see what i'm saying ah another energy so put it on your charmeleon right yeah use charmeleon against for me okay and you can retreat your your, your chatter for free Okay. Right. And I mean, bring up this. Yep, bring him out. Sacrifice one energy and you can do flamethrower. You can do one flamethrower for 50 and that knocks this guy out. Why did you sacrifice energy? Because that's what his attack does. He's, a, he's like a dragon. He has, to, right. he has to suck his fire in and then he blows it out as an attack. All right. Yeah, if he only want, if he only wanted to scratch for 30, he could do that, but okay. if you can knock a person's Pokemon out, nine times out of ten, you want to use that. Okay. Okay. All right. Storm, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. No problem. It. I learned a lot. Okay. And uh, I'll see you again. Okay. I'll let you, I'll let, uh, let these guys go. All right. <laughs> so hopefully the terms Diglett, Drowsy, and Squirtle mean something more than just some crazy gibberish. They're Pokemon. I'm Jamie Jacobs, and on behalf of everyone here at Collector's Guide to the Galaxy, we hope you had fun and learned something. And remember, catch them all.